Hi, thanks for uh, checking out another one of our videos. We're going to show you how to how these things work and maybe how to test some stuff. This is a uh, Kencove KF13. It's a 13 output jewel. It's actually a remote control capable unit as well. Um, this is a private labeled Power Wizard brand. Uh, Power Wizard makes this model, whatever you call it, for Kencove. And Power Wizard does make a version of this that's remote control. It's called a Farm Pro. 13,000 or I don't know it's a farm pro something other all the farm pro models by power was I think they came out with those like 2012 um, Those were all uh, remote control capable units um, This is just a rebadged different colored case um, I actually got a power wizard unit here a non remote control version, but you can see it's a you know, it's just a power wizard unit that's this rebadged and different colored case so not a bad brand, not a bad uh, model. Uh, it's not super old. This one's, uh, look at the back, and manufacturer code 0416, so that's February, January, February. That's April 2016 when it was built, so, you know, not not super old. But we're going to get into it and see what we can figure out with it. But there's our information right there for you. You need to look us up. There are uh, links to our website, stuff in the description area, so hit the little drop-down arrow. You can click on that and take it right to our site, but fencerfixer.com is our site. And we also work on cattle skills and low bars, Gallagher's mostly, but um, we do the EID tag readers by Gallagher. Uh, cattle scale repair.com is our that site for that one. It's not on this business card thing, but I, I, I got ones that have it, but I just can't find it. All right, so we're going to plug this in. It's a 110, 120 volt unit. Plug it in. What it should do, there's a couple of lights that should light up red and green. This light should light up too. So I'll plug it in, see what it does. Sounds a little funny. So let's, um, it's also a half power, full power switch at the bottom here. So it's on half power. We'll turn it to full power, but we're gonna so just clicking and making noise. Let's uh, it's making this humming sound, which is normal, but it seems like it's longer delay to it. So let's plug this in and see what happens. We're getting about a thousand volts out of it. So what the hell's going on there? And that's on full power. So we're gonna pop it apart here. All right, typically the low output usually has something to do with the transformer, which is this piece here, but it doesn't look bad necessarily. Let's, um, for now, let's pull this, plug these two wires here. And we're going to take our, my, that tester and we're going to test across here. And we'll see what kind of reading we get right there. A thousand volts still. So the transformer is not our issue. Most likely not our issue. So, what the hell is going on? So, I've got two boards here. That board looks okay. I mean, it's got some corrosion on it. Looks like it's been installed possibly somewhere where it's getting some water on it because there's some components with rust on it. Oh, if I, oh, I see the problem right now. Well, part of part of a problem. This piece right there is all, oh, God, I think it's hot as hell. The piece right there is all burnt up. Okay, so we need to replace 
We need to put a new board in there. Whew. Well, we need to try to replace that piece right there on the board and see if that makes a difference. I'm also going to test these diodes on the on here. See if they read. Oh, that one might be bad. That one might be bad. That one's good. So what we're going to do first to try it out, we're going to replace these two diodes right here and that protection piece right there in the middle. And then we're going to go from there. Let me unplug this capacitor. At least one wire from it. Uh, and then we're going to discharge it with this big resistor here. Okay, let me grab a protection piece for the for that, and then a couple big diodes for it. Okay, let's see. I'll plug some wires here so we get things loose. We can. Play with it a little bit better. Uh, these parts are soldered to the top and bottom side of the board, which makes it a pain in the neck to solder back to. So what I do is I just snip them off. And I use the leads that are sticking out the top to solder a new, the new part to. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay, let's get the soldering iron out. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add some solder to those little leads that are sticking out the top here now. Same thing on these four here. And then I'm gonna do the solder iron somewhere. Cut off a little bit of this excess wire. I want to add a little solder to the leads on this. There's no polarity to this little part, so it doesn't matter which wire goes where. Alright. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Cut off a little bit of the excess. That's 
too freaking hot to hold. These do go a certain way. Oh, onto the board. Pinch, pinch myself. That's good. It's the last time you heard him say that to that stupid dog. Do you still have, the, do you still have that dog? Test those resistors real quick just to make sure that they're good. So it's in right in line with everything else. That's good. 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 God dang it, I put that freaking dialed in backwards. What? Sticky notes. All right, get these wires all plugged back in. This is from the capacitor.
I mean, my transformer is good. Let's put it back on there. Hopefully, it doesn't sound as weird when you plug it in. Hopefully, it, you know, hopefully it goes to working. That sounds healthier. Eleven thousand. That's what we're talking about. So we fixed the board versus having to replace it. So now we can blow the case out a little bit. Maybe just make sure there's none of that burnt stuff that was on that board. Inside. So I have my lightning got a hold of it. It got heavy, heavily stressed out from load on the fence. I'm not sure what caused those parts to go bad, but they went bad either way. And I guess they did their job if that's what they're designed to do. So we'll let this thing run for a little while. The load on it, make sure it stress test it, make sure that anything else is holding up good. Those blue capacitors, I didn't even bother to test it. They don't go bad that often. Those blue ones don't. So, and it's only 2016, so it's you know four and a half, five years old. Those blue ones, I've seen them in other brands that use those blue ones go 20 years with no problem. So I'm not going to bother testing it. Plus, it puts out a good spark. So I don't think the capacitor is anything to worry about. So, but hopefully you subscribe to the channel, like this kind of stuff, and we work on all sorts of brands and things. Again, there's our website and what we do. You can go check us out there. <laughs> all right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.